everyone! It's time for an episode of Ask Hannah Live, meaning that we're doing this during a live stream and we're getting our questions from the chat. So, welcome everyone, I'm here to answer your questions. Jake, you have compiled some questions from the chat. I have compiled. I'm very good at compiling. It's one of the best things. My it's best it's your biggest skill is compiling. Easily. Easily. Uh, so yes, we do have many, many a question. Um, so, first... First question from friend of the show, Cyrus, uh, who very graciously gave us $5 reduce. Uh, for Hannah, which is the only person that's answering questions, uh, thank you for knowing the show. Um, why was I subjected to the hottest Sonic character video? What madness compelled your fans to give that madness to me? Look, okay. I don't Just, know what you're talking about. Okay, so, oh no, Jake, I gotta show you a little bit of this. So there is a YouTuber who did a video of the air quote, hottest sonic characters okay and Shout i out. found it so fascinating that i told my audience i asked them rather has surus seen this because surus is a sonic aficionado okay mm. surus yeah. knows more about sonic lore no what's nay, Sonic's middle name nay surus has forgotten more about sonic lore than i will ever know okay <laughs> okay let me see if I can, um, hold on. Hottest Sonic characters. Goop till? Sonic the Hedgehog, one yeah, of the greatest yeah. and most attractive characters ever thought of. He can yeah. run at sound speed, take out enemies in a flash, and best of all, he's blue-colored and knows how to handle the females. Speaking of females, <laughs> the Sonic Universe might this also a, be classified kind of joking, as right? hot chick mean? heaven because there's such a yeah. mess of very beautiful and tough women yeah. that it'll make you love the franchise even more. Okay. And since uh. Valentine's Day is around the corner, I've been inspired to make a top ten list of the most beautiful female Sonic characters. Grab yourself Wait, a snack and a glass of orange juice. Uh, Gup till 89, but I, either he deleted this video and it's just been mirrored or oh. the channel got deleted for some reason. I'm not sure. And try not to reach through the screen because Thank here we one. go! Number 10. Right. Try this question on for size. Who chases and hugs Sonic all the time and wields a powerful hammer? Jake, do you know the answer to this question off the top of your head? Who chases and hugs Sonic all the time and wields a powerful hammer? Mm -hmm. I do not. That's Amy Rose, friend. Sure. Amy Rose. Whatever that Why, is. Why, it's Amy Rose, of course. Is. Though more of a cutie than a hottie, you can't deny the fact that she's still attractive. Two things that make her attractive are the fact that she wears a dress, and when That's have you true. ever seen Love three dressed. big, very smooth arcs of hair sticking out of a person's forehead? I haven't. That's, that's so, hot. once again, Amy Rose is lovely. That is, until she goes berserk and starts hitting stuff with her hammer. Who's at number nine? It's this alien plant girl from a distant planet, Cosmo from Sonic X. She arrived right. on the character's okay, planet to deliver Who's a message saying Skip that the galaxy- one. Who's number Who's one? Everyone knows who number one is. Do we? Yes. The hottest lady character? Number one. This is the number one hottest Sonic the Hedgehog female character. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> <Fuck> music. <laughs> <laughs> Rouge the Bat. If anybody denies it, how dare you? This woman can fly, she's as strong as Knuckles, and is a femme fatale seducing other characters into getting what she wants. Instead of having one love interest, she has two, Knuckles and Shadow the Hedgehog. Being a treasure thief, she's only interested in one object set, jewels, especially the Chaos Emeralds. There actually have been situations where Rouge's cleavage has been exposed, but it eventually got censored. What a price to pay. I think the best part about this beauty is that she wears three different outfits unlike the other female characters. And who wouldn't want to fly across the landscape, be as strong as Sean Johnson, and flirt with any male anytime, anywhere? These three traits make Rouge the Bat triumph over all the you Sonic the Hedgehog females. Where My hat going? goes off to you, Sonic Team USA. You ought to be proud. So, that's uh, the sexiest Sonic female characters. 
I want them to do a hottest male Sonic characters video, okay? You didn't really answer the question, to be fair. What was the question? Why? Oh, Why? because I thought it was funny. <laughs> okay. Just an agent of chaos. I thought it would be Why? funny to send people to give Cirrus a video that would cause Cirrus pain. <laughs> <laughs> you missed the part where he says she's the size of an average human mother. <laughs> okay. John Wow, thanks for the fuck. Uh, okay, so that's the end of that fucking nightmare. <laughs> Next question! You have to take Sonic off the screen or it's it's, it's distracting. Yeah. Um, L5, uh, or I'm, I'm sorry, that uh, that was my note and I fucked it up. That's five pounds. I don't have a pound sign on here. Not, not L5. Just I just put an L instead of the pound sign. So for five pounds, uh, Oladization asked, could you do some more Alex Belfield reactions? He's got a whole pile of chud nonsense. I think obviously we have to do an example of Alex Hold Belfield on, who's now. who's Alex Belfield? I don't know. It must be so. You said more, so I must have covered this person before, but I don't remember. Did. Did, who was it? No, I did. That was me. Okay. Yeah, I did. So, so I guess I'm sucked. not familiar with this. Is this someone this I should guy, cover? This guy, this, uh, uh, we shouldn't probably, well, he's not, okay. So he's basically, um, he's sneaky, he's sneakier about his shit, I guess a little bit. It's okay. not a lot, but he goes like, I'm Alex Belfield, and I think that, you know, do whatever you want, wear a dress, call yourself a helicopter, but also think of the children. You know, that kind of fucking shit. Gotcha. So he's one of those guys. Okay. Um, the BLM anniversary, uh, you know, this is not, he's not going to have uh, good takes. I'm actually surprised at his low view count for his, what's how many subscribers does he have? Some of them hit really high, but some of them are really low. He oh, never mind, never mind, never mind. 305,000 subscribers. Never mind, never mind. They're not low. He uploads 13, 12, 11, 10, Constantly. 9, 8. Seven. Wow, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. This guy uploads so fucking often. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that was a thing. Pronouns, There, there's one. Uh, it said pronouns right on it. Don't but, you love uh, when someone calls their podcast or show or whatever voice the reason. voice of reason or something yeah. like that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, he's he's got actually. Yeah, I'll do some more of these for sure. I've done them before, so yeah. He's he's just he's just um he's not very bright. Uh, he's got he's he's <laughs> I don't know. He's he's not really he's not really a, a very entertaining uh, okay. chud, but he is always a reliable one. He's like a Honda. He's like my dick. That is also a Honda. Gotcha. Oh, wait, just today's Tuesday. Eddie. I'm so stupid. What tin foil? I thought today what? was Wednesday and we had D&D &D later. Nope. I gotta show you the voice you wanted me to tell you to. Remind me before we... <laughs> oh, we're not doing that today anyway. But yeah, that voice. But uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's tomorrow. We got D&D &D tomorrow. Cool. You guys should come come to the D&D &D tomorrow. You'd like it. It's on my channel. Actual Jake on the Twitch. Anyway, I'll... I'll do all the D&D. &D. I'll cover this Alex Belfield guy. Um, thank you for the recommendation. Yeah, he's good. In a bad way. All right. So, with $10 redos, M. Kip asked, Hannah, what's your current wardrobe like? What kind of clothes do you like wearing? Is there anything you really want to wear but don't have? Um, that's a good question. Mo pretty much everything that I have at this point has either, either been given to me by someone um, or, or, or something like that. There are a couple things that um, Baja got me, which is great. She has a really good sense of um, um, stuff that I like to wear. Uh, so I don't have a ton. This is one of my favorite things, actually. Sarah gave this to me. I think she bought this for herself, um, but it didn't fit. I love this aesthetic. This is awesome. Yeah, she actually got a, uh, a different, um, like a skirt with that pattern on it or something. Yeah. Or very similar recently. It's, it's really um, cool. I haven't gotten out to go shop stuff, really, um, because of, uh, uh, COVID. But now my vaccine is, uh... All effective i think in the next week um baja and i probably this weekend are gonna go out and shop and that'll be fun so i will be looking for things like this but also <clears throat> l l let me put a, f a one second um hmm. uh how much of the first campaign is left probably three to four episodes uh one of was, which being a, a wrap-up episode there was a really cool nasa shirt that was at Meyer like last year I don't think I'm gonna be able to find it but I really like it it was like really colorful and almost like had like a shiny thing going on basically I would like to alternate between 
dark mystical bullshit like this and really uh colorful pink <laughs> colorful really stuff. Really colorful pink? Yeah. I can't find it, but you get it. I don't know. Oh, okay. I wasn't showing anyone the screen except for you. Whoops. Nope. You get it. That's it didn't show the thing anyway. Yeah. But I don't know. Um, uh, I, I really like this, though. There you go. Um, I don't think there's anything you didn't answer there. Well, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. What about summertime wear? Getting a getting a, a yellow? A yellow is good for the summertime. I, I don't like the color yellow. I really don't. I don't think I'd ever wear mm. something yellow intentionally. Mm. <laughs> It, okay. it, not if yellow was the primary color. If it was like an accent color, it's fine. But I wouldn't. If I saw something that was like this, but mostly yellow in color, I'd be like, mm -mm. I don't like the no, color too yellow. Loud for it. Too loud for you. It's not even that it's loud. I just don't like the color yellow. You just don't like it. I wonder if it has to do with the fact. Isn't yellow on the opposite end of the color? Like if you have a color wheel, isn't purple and yellow I, opposing yeah, colors? But I believe they're, they're complementary, is what they are. I don't want them together, though. That's I don't not, want yellow and purple. The is. Um, Rachel Lewis just being just being kind. Hannah looking cute today. Love the goth hippie vibes. Love the outfit. Thank you. Uh, and thank you for the four ninety nine. We're on sale today. Uh, um, okay, so Malik Zareth asked, and this was uh, not a dono, but just a a, a, a question that I thought was interesting. Um, there was some other stuff before. Uh, you're dealing with some shit, and uh, hopefully that gets better. But also. My whole family supports QAnon except for me. Do you think some Q people are redeemable? That's a tough question. Um, QAnon tends to operate in a very cult-like fashion. So the good news is that people do leave cults. And even within the QAnon community, there is a subreddit, by the way, that might help you out um, called QAnon Casualties. It's a sort of a support group subreddit for people whose families have gotten very into QAnon and they talk about it together and how they feel about it. So I would highly recommend you check that out um, if that's something you're dealing with. But um, luckily there have been some success stories on there, especially as we've gotten further away from the election and you know, predictions and stuff continue to not happen. Um, there have been some stories of people breaking away from the QAnon thing. I can't guarantee that it'll happen, but it's entirely possible that someday your family will come to their senses and realize that it's just nonsense. It's hard, though, because people don't like to admit that they've been tricked. And being tricked by something like QAnon is especially embarrassing because it's falling for an internet scam started on 4chan. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just, it's, well, and also it's embarrassing. Because they, hey, because Lou, the, Lou. Because the way, the way that, uh, that like any sort of conspiracy thing manifests is it like is your life. So, so you have to base a lot of your personality around the thing and then if you are, if you, if you've been duped, then you're duping other people, which makes you feel like a fucking asshole, rightfully so, kind of. Um, but there's also like a part of, of that that's like, you know, it, it, it's effective from a psychological standpoint for a reason. So there are also victims in a way, but you can't use your own victimhood to perpetuate the harm of others that, that you, you cause. So it's like a, it's. I would say, as far as redeemability is concerned, yes, I think most people are redeemable to some extent. Um, it just depends on what you're doing. I don't think I don't think believing in a conspiracy theory is unredeemable. Um, it's usually the actions that go along with that kind of stuff, and then there's a lot of work that has to be done. So, for for anyone in these kinds of spaces, the left spaces, I feel like someone that that believes in Q and stuff would have to really show their work and be like you know, actively a, a decent person to be around and, and to talk to and stuff instead of just like, oh, I was wrong about that, but I still like vote for Republicans. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, and that's the complicated thing with QAnon because the QAnon belief system, if you go on somewhere like um, um, Great Awakening, which is like a forum where I know there's big mm -hmm. telegraph communities, it's not just that they believe crazy things. A lot of these people actively have like violent fantasies about their political yeah. enemies getting rounded up and murdered, you know? So how do you come back from that? How do you get to that point where you're actively encouraging a fascist takeover of the country and then try and step back and 
not feel that way anymore. I, I guess I don't know. I find it a little difficult to get into that headspace, I guess. Yeah, but, I can't empathize it, but I can intellectually get to, like, understand, like, okay, well, this is what's happening and, and stuff. But, like, th there are Nazis that stop being that and, yeah. and try to talk about that. I don't think it's necessarily that different of a mindset because it's still prejudice or prejudicial behavior based on, like, you know, nonsense that that really makes you fucking genuinely hate somebody which obviously is not beneficial for anyone's like especially like like you know a racist or a QAnon honor like it's not healthy just from a mindset perspective to be hating people constantly all the fucking time that stuff um, is destructive it, it like eats away at you inside it's really really bad yeah and you definitely get uh, uh you know people can obsess over that kind of shit so um yeah, I, I would say I would say if you're spending a lot of your free time freely obsessing over someone because you don't like them, you should probably take a pull back just a second and be like, you know what? Maybe I'm maybe I'm spiraling here. Um, yeah. Now the Jordan Peterson fans will be like, what did you do? Reading a book is not the same thing as uh, devoting your life to a conspiracy theory, but that's. But I love that. Is there anything else that we want to talk about, Q? I don't think so. I cover that stuff pretty regularly. I'm probably going to yeah. cover some on Tinfoil Tuesday today, um, which is going to be after this. I think I'm actually going to cover, I'm going to go to Great Awakening um, and look at their top posts, yeah. most of which are from right before January 20th, and see their failed predictions. <clears throat> It'll be pretty interesting, so check that I out. I will say, I will say, with a, um, for a little bit of, uh, a little silver lining here, um... I think it was a tweet the other day that uh, uh, sort of put that into perspective. Um, not really necessarily specifically Q, but adjacent enough. 56% um, uh, of Republicans, um, um, or not, re was it Republicans? Yeah, 56% of Republicans um, believe that Donald Trump is should be president, right? Mm -hmm. Which is actually much lower than than they, it was earlier, like 56% of Republicans. But then within that, that means that, that like 26% of, of just all people um, uh, within that, I, I, I like 26% of people actually are part of that party. And then within that, it means like 14% of those people believe in like the really bad shit so it's really actually um it's not a small and insignificant number but it's not like it's not like every republican which is good it's it's surprising it's it's lessening as as, as time goes by and again like you said before like the predictions continue to be wrong and they don't that st stuff doesn't happen the kraken has not been unleashed um um or to any effect effectiveness um so there's a little silver line. Like, that, that number continues to dwindle. It continues to get smaller. We'll see what the next election cycle brings us, though. <laughs> yeah. Um, my concern is that even as people fall off of QAnon, they're not necessarily going to be like, well, I was wrong. It's time to go vote for Jeb Bush. I think they're still going to be pretty radicalized to the point of uh, extreme right-wing viewpoints, but it's hard to say. Yeah, yeah. There's... there's um. There's a there's a bunch of people within the within the Republican Party that like are fighting each other right now. Um, people like uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene are becoming less popular with the mainstream Republicans uh, more and more. I don't know. Um, it like, seems like I mean maybe it's well, just an issue of like when media ben Shapiro coverage. Calls, but... When Ben Shapiro calls you a fucking insane person, like you're you're starting to go too far, right? So I mean, there's a lot of right wingers who don't like Ben Shapiro though because they think he's well. That's what I'm saying. Too... That's an... That's, that's good. You want them to be split on that kind of shit. Um, because, because you know, Ben Shapiro is not insignificant in his poll in the, in the right-wing spaces. So, yeah. you know, Daily Wire is trying to... Uh, they're doing a really good thing that the left is not doing. Um, they are trying to obtain a lot of the uh, young sort of YouTuber influencer talent that's in the right-wing spaces, and they're starting to do, like, crossover shit with them a lot, um, which I think the left should do. And that's just because I would like to be involved with that kind of thing because I think we would be, but uh, because I think it's important. Like, um, I don't know why you do that. Like, we're, we're, like, we are known in these lefty spaces. I don't, know, I don't know why you don't think we are. What are you talking about? What? Very interesting. Um, uh, Joseph Santi, thanks so much for the $5. 
Uh, just note, say Hannah's looking lovely and should know it every day. There you go. Thank you. Um, uh, uh, okay. So, num for, uh, unless we have anything else with Q, but I don't believe there. No, I think that's about it. Uh, so, next question from Josh uh, Solomon for $2 reduce. Fuck, Mary kill. Ben Shapiro, Alex Jones, and Joe Rogan. Actually, fuck, Mary kiss. Okay, give me the options again. Ben Shapiro, Alex Jones, and Joe Rogan. Oh, God, they're all terrible. Okay, marry Ben Shapiro, just so we stop saying he has a doctor wife. Um, okay, now he has a harem. <laughs> where everyone's dry. That's my secret. I'm always dry. I think you gotta... Okay, who's better in the sack is really the question here, Alex Jones or Joe Rogan. No, no, here's my... Okay, I'm gonna... I, I'll, well, I'll, kiss, is, fuck, I'll uh, kiss Alex Jones and I okay. will marry... No, wait. You'll kiss Alex Jones. No, I'm kiss gonna. You know what? I'm gonna. I'm gonna flip. No. Mm. Oh God, they're I think both so gross. I, think... I don't like either of them. They're so gross. I think that. I think the play here is you. Is you. Is you. Fuck Ben Shapiro. You marry Joe Rogan for the money, and you kiss Alex Jones for the good of humanity. <laughs> sure, let's go with that. Although I think the meat might get him faster, so maybe you should swap Ben Shapiro and take one for the team here. It's not like Alex Jones is going to last a long time. No. I feel like I feel like you'd be like, oh, that was really good. Let's go get a steak. I remember the first time I saw Alex Jones online, he was going around in Joker makeup, and I was like, who is this weirdo? And then it turned out he's incredibly influential. <laughs> That's slowly dwindling as he continues to lose lawsuits. Good. I think Joe Rogan is sensitive enough to be a good lover. No. No, but I think he has weed that's good enough to make it feel like he's sensitive enough to be a good lover. Yeah, he's going to give you DMT, and you're going to trip, and he's going to dick you down. Wait, why does Joe Rogan get to dick me down? Joe Rogan would be dicking you down in this scenario. I mean, I think, not that, not that he couldn't if he wanted to, but I feel like I feel like Joe Rogan is, he's got a lot on his plate. I think he wants to be topped. Mm. Most men of power are like are, are, are big time subs. It's a fact. I don't big think time. I don't think Joe Rogan is a sub. They want to give up control in one part of their life. Anyway. Alright, uh, then dick him uh, down. Dick him down, dick, Jake. Dick him down, you do it. Alright, so you didn't really I don't think you really gave a definitive answer here. We we're still sort of workshopping it. So you gotta we gotta make your final call here. You gotta do an FMK. Ben Shapiro, Alex Jones, Joe Rogan. Mary Ben Shapiro. Okay. Kiss Alex Jones. F. Joe Rogan. F him? Yeah. Are we trying to maintain sponsors? I already said it three times. It's too <laughs> well, late. My, you said it. My, you, you said it my half time. of the income for the video will be monetized. That's how this works, right? I don't believe that's how it works. That's how it works. Um, we could say, we could say it. Uh, we just have to, you know, can't be every word, which is fine. Not that he couldn't if he wanted to. He, he, I mean, he, he could definitely, you know. I think Alex Jones could could uh, have his way with me if he wanted to as well. He's a big boy. Ben Shapiro, though? Now who's the top? Uh, anyway. Uh, Files. He agrees, but only if Gina Carano can hang out in the corner and watch. Dude, did you, did you see his interview with Gina Carano? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, so Gina Carano got absorbed by the Daily Wire because uh, he liked click, clickbait, and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it was one of the worst fucking interviews I've ever seen. He just wanted to be stepped on the whole time, so bad, and it's just like, dude, shoot your shot, bro. Like, 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 you only live once, Ben. Come on, man. You never know. You might put you in a headlock if you ask. I don't know. Like, get it done. I feel bad for him. He really, he really wanted that shit. Ben Shapiro, oh, out of all the people that we've talked about, I definitely think would like to be a sub if he's not already. Well, his, his, He was bullied his, a lot in school, and right. I think that translates to wanting to... <laughs> wanting to be subbed? Yeah. I think... Are you projecting? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, $5 from Donnie Hollandale. 
says, Hannah, have you seen Invincible? You spelled it wrong, but it's, uh, it's, that's okay. Uh, on Amazon, uh, and what are your thoughts? For me, I loved it. It was incredibly brutal and realistically grounded. Did you watch it? I did. Well, I watched it. I did. I loved Invincible. It was great. And I didn't know anything about Invincible going in. I knew it existed. I, I knew the character was a thing. But I didn't know anything about the story. So I went into the first episode of Invincible, and I didn't know it was, like, an R-rated <laughs> thing. So the first episode actually, oh, spoilers for Invincible. Well, are we going to do spoilers? Not spoilers? season long, like, but just for the first episode. First episode, and then I'll be vague, okay? Is Jake a trans male? I am not. So, um, I went into the first episode, and it plays it really straight for the first, like, 99% of it. I'm just like, okay, this is, like, a PG-13-ish yeah. animated superhero show. Should it seems all right. Spoil it, but we can talk about the thing. There's definitely a thing that happens at the end. Yeah. Um, a lot of brutality and shit, and they take the, they, they peel that, they peel that sticker off. Mm-hmm. Shit. So the first episode plays it relatively relatively straight, and I was just like, okay, it's going to be about his relationship with his dad, which, I mean, it is. Um, and it's going to be about him kind of coming to terms with having his powers, a coming-of-age story. And then that last scene happens, and I just, my jaw dropped because I really didn't know that was going to happen. And I was like, holy shit. And I immediately went through, like, four more episodes because I didn't yeah. get into it until some weeks in. Um, yeah. It's an excellent show. Really great characters. Um, I, I think this is written by the same guy that did the Walking Dead comics, Robert Kirkman. Um, mm -hmm. I really love that it, the world itself feels fleshed out, even though... How do I put this? It, it feels like a full superhero universe, like like the demon detective guy. I'm like, okay, that that feels like a comic book character that could exist. And I mean, it does. I know it is a comic book character in this universe. Hey, Brown voice in that character. Very cool. The voice acting cast. Did you look at the actual oh, cast? Oh yeah, it's crazy. It's Nuts. absolutely crazy. Nuts. I mean, they get Mahershala Ali for an episode and a half mm -hmm. for like the sake of it. I think he's going to be in, that, in season two or something. It seems to be the case, but the the voice cast is is great. I really like that it's an Asian American uh, uh, lead, and I that's basically what I knew about Invincible going in. I knew that he was like, yeah, like, because um, when it came out back in the day, there was like a, a comic book event or something that I happened to go to, and they were giving away uh, like uh, the first edition of uh, Invincible, um, and I read it, and uh, uh, it didn't get into any of the crazy shit. I was like, man, this is really interesting. I really like how, and I think it's really, really elegant, how it's not any of the superheroes you know, but it also is. So you can imply backgrounds in a lot of the characters that are derivative, mm -hmm. but they still are fresh because of the way it's approached. Robert Kirkman's a really good, a really good author, and he's a really good writer of, of things. The only thing I thought was dumb, um, and I think a lot of people maybe thought this was dumb, especially on second viewing, is is uh, when his girlfriend gets mad at him for something in in like the middle episodes, and she like she like stays mad at him, and then she's like, I actually knew. And it's like that's yeah, really fucking. I, I don't I don't get that. I don't get that. Make any sense? Other than that, I think it's a it's a really cool, and it has like like as we as we get out of the sort of initial arc, it starts to get very unique. Mm -hmm. uh, it becomes its very own story pretty quickly. Um, even though it still has like this sort of like um, justice leaguey stuff going on, um, and and you know it has LGBT representation, it seems to deal with people in a in a in a way that seems to make more sense. People feel a lot more grounded. It's pretty good. Did, did you like? Is there anything that really stood out for you that you didn't expect besides the um, sort of I guess the the more adult theme? I was just gonna say the last episode of season one of Invincible is one of the most impactful episodes of television I've ever watched, and it probably has something to do with my upbringing. But just the existential horror of realizing that someone that is close to you, that you're supposed to have this implicit trust in, is basically a psychopath narcissist who cares about nobody and will do anything to get their way, is something I relate to. And yeah. it, it's honestly horrifying. It, that that episode horrified me in like the the literal definition of the word. The whole episode, I was just chills. I was like, oh my god, this is terrible. Imagine. I was, 
I was surprised it was that effective. Yeah, because it's it's you know I think I think um, um, J.K. Simmons does such a good job. Mm-hmm. So, and just the 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 level of violence on display, but it, it was gratuitous. But it was gratuitous with a purpose, right? Because that, yeah, that level of gratuity in, in a different context might make me roll my eyes, like, oh, God, was this really necessary? But no, yeah. in, in in this story, in that scene, in those scenes, it was necessary to show the... I think every scene that they do really bad, big-time yeah. violence, um, other than a few, like, like um, they, they, it, I think they do a thing that Man of Steel tried to do and failed. Yeah. I would agree. Where they show like the the especially the first like big fight that um, Invincible has, um, he doesn't really know how to control you know his impact on smashing through buildings and stuff, and it's very interesting. And I like that you know there's no plot armor, nobody has plot armor. It's everybody's up for grabs, just like a Robert Kirkman thing. Um, I'm a big fan of the books of Walking Dead. They were very good. The show very much dipped off after like the second season. Uh, as soon as they did the Sophia thing. Sophia! Wait, you don't like uh, hanging out at a farm for a whole season? And then they gotta pull a zombie out of a well, even though that well is ruined now because a zombie was in it? Like, why yeah. are they even pulling it out? Yeah, good stuff. Um, yeah, Invincible's really good. Uh, if you like the boys, there's no way you don't like Invincible. Um, it's a little bit like... It's like if the boys was a young adult novel, but good, not, not tropey. Yeah. Because when it uses the tropes, it uses them in a way that subverts the expectation there. It's a really good show. Hmm. I know there's been some criticism of it for being on the nose at times, but, like, maybe may, maybe read comic books more. Because that's, like, a very, very comic book thing to do is to have exposition and, and to do that. So, um, Anything else? Anything anything for no, Invincible? No, I, I just I highly one recommend um, if you haven't seen Invincible, go check it out. It's on Amazon Prime. It's a really great show. The whole first season's out now. Check it out. Indeed. Great cast. Um, great yeah. story. Likeable characters. Enjoyable. Mm -hmm. I agree. Last question I have. Last question I have. From Wake and Jake for five dollar reduce. What up, Hannah and Jake? I'm an old fan of the Bible Bible Reloaded days, uh, and I'm catching up on your content. Love it. Keep it up. It wasn't a question. It was just nice. So thank you. Um, yeah. So 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 that's 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 all of them. I mean, there were some other this was other questions, um, kind of that were. Oh yeah, and Seth Rogen and Evan Goldman. Seth Rogen was actually in there. Mm -hmm. um, have you caught up on Preacher? I've only seen the first season. Is it still same? Good? I I only caught the first season. Oh okay. Preacher was really good. I think that's isn't um, that based on because I think Preacher's a Garth Ennis thing, just like the boys. I believe so. Yeah. I have the first edition of Preacher, um, the comic, and that's good. And I I did yeah. read I watched the first season of the show, which was good. Although they they I, I have a happy graphic novel around here somewhere that's really good too. Yeah. I also have the Hawkeye one. But uh, yeah. Uh, Walking Dead is. Yeah, I need to, Can I borrow that before the Hawkeye show comes out? By the way, because it's supposedly um, based on that. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know how much this is, but yes. Uh, what does it say? It doesn't really tell me how much. You it know what? Is. Actually, I have a Marvel Now post. subscription. It's probably on there. I can read it on my tablet. Never mind. <laughs> it's probably. Yeah, it's the uh, Hawkeye. It's probably just a, the the first like ten uh, yeah. books or something like that. Um, Garth Ennis, good guy. Uh, I guess, is there anything else in this, in, just as a last little question to wrap it up, is there any other media coming out that we're really pumped for? I'm really pumped for Loki. Yeah, I think um, Loki looks great. I'm, I've enjoyed the Marvel Disney Plus shows so far. The Bad Batch yeah. has been good so far. Have you been watching that? The Bad Batch. It's a, oh, the, 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 the Disney Plus um, um, Star Wars thing. I have not watched that yet because I haven't finished. Um, I want to finish the, um, what's the one? The Clone one with Wars? Ezra Bridger. I thought, no, not Clone Wars. Uh, Rebels. Oh, okay. Um, no. Yeah, Bad Batch is good. Interesting look into sort of the transition from the Republic after Revenge of the Sith to um, yeah, uh, uh, the Empire and how that transition takes place. Interesting stuff. It's good. Mm -hmm. um, what else am I looking forward to? Black Widow, I think, will be fun. Um, I'm glad it's going to be on Disney+. Plus. Be. Yeah. Let me see what else is upcoming. When they first announced it, I thought, like, I don't think there's, like, a story here. But the cast looks really good. And, obviously, uh, Venom looks trash. I yeah. Like, Venom was not good. Um, I wish Venom was 
Love and Thunder. Space so Jam Two is probably going to be bad, but I'll enjoy it. Um, Wait, is 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 Doctor Strange this year? Mm -mm, I think that's next year. Fuck. So we get Shang Chi. Is Spider Man this year? I don't no. think so. I think that's next year. We get, so year we get after. Eternals. Uh, the Shang Matrix Chi. Four is coming out, which might be good. Um, this year? Mm hmm. Really? When's that? Oh, I'm we not sure. See that. It's later though. We should go see that, especially now. So, be because they announced it as a trans allegory, I'm wondering if they're going to be like now leaning into it a little bit more. I don't know. Or if it's just going to continue. Like, because I didn't really like the second or third w that much. Obviously, it's not. They're not. They're not as good. But, I know you don't uh, like musicals, but uh, the West don't. Side Story remake, I'm pretty excited for. Mm. A new Edgar Wright movie is coming out uh, okay. called Last Night in Soho. Oh, it's right there. Um, that looks weird. I don't, but I love Edgar Edgar Wright, so it might be good. It's got um, um, the actress from that chess TV show that I forgot. Yeah, yeah, I know who you're talking about. Anya something, I think. Uh, Halloween really Kills is coming out. Have you seen the Halloween uh, from, like, two years ago? It was just called no. Halloween. It's the best Halloween movie since the original. I highly recommend you watch it if you around Halloween or something, if you're into, you know, the Halloween movies. I should check it out. So the next one, I hope, is going to be good, but I assume it won't be. <laughs> Halloween, <laughs> the Halloween movies have never been able to make two good movies one after the other. So, <laughs> let's see. How never, they... not once. Oh no. The closest There's is more... probably between Halloween one and Halloween two, but Halloween two isn't that great. So, too bad Morbius isn't out yet. Uh, That's the great. Marvel What If show is gonna probably be good. Thanks. And Spider Man is this year. Is it? Yeah, twenty twenty one. Are you sure? Did they not December... push? It? I thought they pushed that back. I mean, I think it got pushed back to December 17th. I think it was going to come out last year, wasn't it? I don't know. A lot of things got pushed around, though, so I don't know. Rumors oh, the are... Suicide Squad actually looks really good. Yeah. When's that come out? August 6th. we got to go to Suicide Squad. It's coming out on HBO Max. We could just watch it, like, at your house. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, do we have to buy it? No. Like, premium? It's on it? HBO oh, Max. Well, fuck that. I'm not going, to... I'm going to that if I can get it there. Maybe The Eternals, then? Yeah. I got. We, I want to go to a. That's in November. I want to go to a movie. Yeah. Now that we're vaccinated and like actually like experience. Although, like I said before, we were talking last time. Oh, July 9th is Black Widow's on Disney though. Um. Although we probably have to pay thirty dollars for that, huh? I'm gonna. Just cause. Yeah. I Why don't we just really we just all watch it here too again. If you want. Yeah. If we all wanted um, to chip in and maybe order some pizza or something, that might be fun. Well, I could just buy and you guys can buy food. That's okay. Easy enough. Um, Space Jam's yeah. coming out. We should watch Space Jam. We should get Here's real. We should have. get real high and watch Space I, Jam. We definitely have to watch Space Jam. Is that going to be available on HBO yep, Max? Yep, that's an HBO Max one. Okay, I gotta ask. And so is the Matrix Four. That's HBO Max. Three days from now, Cruella comes out. That can't be good, right? I would think not, but I'm excited for it. All right, then I'll watch it with you. <laughs> three days what? from now, are we gonna hang out? Three watch days. It? Is it? Well, do, do we want to watch it three days from now? That'd be Friday. Okay, I can. Well, just let me know but, whatever or, day. Or if you want to wait, if you want to wait till the following Tuesday, we could also do that. I don't know though. But we can watch it Friday. If you just want to watch it opening night, I'm fine with that. You can come over. Uh oh, I got like a line now because of my cool hat. Who still has cable? Yeah. Is that a thing? Yeah. Blech. All right. Can so that's Ask Hannah. Thank you everyone there, for the questions. There it was. Thank you, guys. If you're on YouTube, check the links in the description. You're all on YouTube. This is just a live stream of the YouTube. <laughs> Those are words.